you very much, Gilbert, and thank you all very much for joining. I'm going to be talking about a very exciting part of, uh, of what's happening in the world at the moment. As the world transitions to electric vehicles and they're mandated in the European Union, China has been leading the way in the transition to electric vehicles, and now the US and Canada is catching up. As this energy transition proceeds, we need more and more of the battery materials that are going into batteries. But not just those materials, we need them to be produced in a cleaner, more environmentally sensitive and a higher quality way because the battery technologies of today need those sorts of inputs. And that is what Lake Resources can deliver because we use a new technology that produces high quality cleaner lithium. Now I'm going to run through a presentation which is available on our website at, at lakeresources.com.au. Please don't forget the .au. And Gilbert's team also has this available uh, if you ask about it. So it's entitled Cleaner Lithium for an Electric World. Now I will be making forward looking statements, so please be aware of that. Lake Resources is centered in the prime location for lithium brines. This is the best real estate, and we're in the middle of that. We're down the road from the producer called Livent, which has been in Argentina for the longest time, since 1997. But we don't just have one project, we have four projects. And that's because we were able to pick these up in 2015, 2016, and that's why we have a large lease holding of 2,200 square kilometers. And what we do is produce the world's cleanest, highest purity lithium, 99.97% purity, and that means very low impurities, but together with significant ESG benefits. And the way we do that is by using a new and cleaner technology. Now the technology used is called iron exchange. Iron exchange is actually very common in water treatment and it's much more efficient than the traditional process. Moreover, this technology is backed by the big names, the Bill Gates led Breakthrough Energy Fund and the most successful venture capital investor ever in Silicon Valley called Chris Sacker and his uh, lower, uh, lower carbon capital fund. This produces a cleaner environment, uh, a smaller environmental footprint, small la low land use and low water usage. And we're on a clear pathway into production. We've demonstrated this works at pilot plant scale in California. We will have a demonstration plant on site at the end of this year and then we'll move to close financially by the middle of uh, next year into, into construction and then production in 2024. So how does it work? What we do is imagine a, a dry salt lake, like in Death Valley in California, and we pump up the brine from underneath and we put it through modules and in those modules are iron exchange beads that extract the lithium. <clears throat> and then we use a traditional process to produce lithium carbonate. So this produces a high purity product. It does it fast. We're talking hours instead of months or years. We get virtually all of the lithium rather than leaving half of it behind in the traditional method. It's sustainable. It's cost competitive. We can scale up. We've demonstrated this in a pilot plant. And what happens in one or two modules in a pilot plant is the same as what's going to happen in 50 modules at production. So it ends up with a much smaller physical footprint with lower land use. Instead of the brine evaporation ponds that we see in the north of Chile, we're going to have a footprint the size of a city block, less than one kilometer square. Instead of all the brine being evaporated into the atmosphere, we return virtually all of it back to its source. And it has a low carbon footprint 
And this low carbon footprint is very important for the electric vehicle makers, particularly out of the European Union. In the last two days, we announced a much closer partnership with our technology partner, Lilac Solutions. We have been partnered with them now for a couple of years, but now they are going to progressively earn into our largest project, Kachi, and they will progressively earn in up to 25% by demonstrating how well this process works. And when they do so, they will then invest US 50 million into the project. Now, the benefit of that is that this is a technology provider saying, our technology works, we know it works at scale, we know it's going to work in production, and here's our money to support it. And that money comes from some of the largest technology supporters that have been ever invented. The Bill Gates led Breakthrough Energy Fund, uh, as I mentioned, Chris Sacker's lower carbon capital, and it aligns this climate tech investment with the very first time with upstream environmentally friendly battery material supply of lithium. So it really is a major event. And we announced this just a couple of days ago. We're on a clear pathway to go to 25,000 tons per annum. And we're targeting this for 2024. But because the demand for lithium is so strong, we're now involving an expansion study to 51,000 tons per annum. And this will make us one of the five largest producers on the globe. Uh, the largest is Gengfang lithium from China, but we will be in the top five. This is what the project will look like. As I said, a small physical footprint. And on the right-hand side, you'll see letter A, direct extraction. That is the warehouse that the modules will be hosted in having 20, instead of having 20 or 25 square kilometers of evaporation ponds. We've proven that this works in nickel rich batteries, thanks to a company called Novonics, which operates out of Nova Scotia in Canada. Their clients include Panasonic, CATL, Samsung, and they have demonstrated this product works just like tier one products in the industry. Because we produce a high premium product, we get a high premium price and a high margin. And this is what differentiates us from others in the industry. We make a lot more money than others do. Our project is large and scalable. 25 years of production only uses 20% of the current resource, and this resource is open uh, laterally and at depth. It covers 740 square kilometers of leases. We control the whole basin. Our pre-feasibility study has shown this is a very robust project with an NPV evaluation of 1.6 billion US dollars and annual cash flows of approximately 200 and 60 million US dollars per year. Now, that is half of our market value is the money that we'll be producing every year for 25 years from this production. And most of that will be free cash flow. Further, we've announced how this will be debt financed 70% by the export finance arm of the, uh, of the UK government. So, Britain, the United Kingdom will be providing their money and their guarantees to other banks to finance this for a long period of time over 10 years at low interest rates. And so we produce a very robust project where we are currently have our final definitive feasibility study underway, our environmental social impact assessment, and we aim to have that finished by Q1 or early Q2 next year. In the meantime, we'll have a demonstration plant on site. We have the support for an expansion to 51,000 tons per annum with a production target of 25,000 tons per annum in 2024. By delivering the things that I've mentioned, we will then trigger the debt financing and aiming to be in construction uh, by the middle of next year, 
or, or financial close middle of next year with uh, construction in Q3 next year, aiming for production in 2024. Corporately, we trade on the Australian Securities Exchange as ticker LKE and on the US OTC as LLKKF. But we have a lot of followers, both in China, uh, in Hong Kong, and in Canada. We've got a share price of around 50 to 60 Australian cents per share, uh, cash in the bank of about 25, uh, 26 million Australian dollars, and we're targeting that to be 60 million dollars by the end of October because we have in the money options which are being converted. That means that with the money that our technology partner Lilac is bringing in, together with the money that we'll have at the end of October, we are almost fully financed. And with the attached options that expire in June next year, we would be fully financed. A market value of about half a billion dollars, and we reasonably expect that value to increase significantly. Our closest peer has a valuation of $1.3 billion. They recently moved from the, the Toronto exchange, the TSXV, onto the New York Stock Exchange. They only own 30% of their project and they're valued at 1.3 billion. So we need to match at least that valuation over the next nine months as we uplist on the US main board. We have other projects as well, alongside uh, Geng Fang at a project called Kauchari. We've demonstrated we have the same brines. We've got a strong team, both in Argentina and in Australia, on the ground. People who've done this before, I have worked in Argentina, Chile, Peru for years, and so has the technical director. Uh, we all speak Spanish and are very familiar with how to make projects work. So we're aiming for a cleaner lithium for an electric world by producing the highest period of lithium technology led extraction with major ESG benefits. Thank you very much. It's probably time for questions. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yeah, let's welcome some questions here. And the first one being here, Shane, he's asking, do you have any major shareholders here in North America and Europe? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to disclose who they are, but we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we have six funds that follow climate change, which are in the United States. We have two significant ESG funds out of Switzerland who have been following us now since January. And we recently engaged a Canadian broker called Red Cloud, and they will probably bring Canada-based funds onto our register somewhere in the coming months. We just had a webinar with them a couple of days ago. Okay, there's another question coming from here, which is say, uh, how are the off-ticker negotiations progressing? Any contact with British vote? Yes, yeah, so, if I can provide some context to our, to our off-tech conversations. This time last year, we were very keen to have either an off-taker or somebody from the supply chain actively working with us and co-investing in the project. This calendar year, 2021, the equity markets have opened up so we can access equity. We've been fortunate to source debt through export credit agencies, and we'll have more to say about that in the coming weeks. We've been fortunate with our technology partner that they are actually a better fit because people have been concerned about how well the technology works, so they are investing in the project. And then with the off-takers, we've been having conversations both with car makers and with battery makers at the same time to form a three-way agreement because the car makers want to get this ESG benefit in their supply chain, and the battery makers are desperate for supply. Okay, so we've had our conversations with most of the parties that you would reasonably expect in the European Union, as well as in East Asia. Recently, lithium prices increased significantly from a range of 10 and a half to $13,000 a ton, into in the new range of 17 to $21,000 a ton. 
That's just in the last four weeks. So naturally, we want to capture that pricing into our negotiations, but um, please be confident that you will hear more of that before we release our definitive feasibility study in early next year. Another question here, what services are Canicot generally providing for the recently issued options? Uh... Yes, uh, that is an excellent question. I thank you whoever asked that. Uh, so Canaccord is has been working with us, uh, the same as Red Cloud, in introducing us to potential uh, new fund managers and also expanding the interest in our stock. And you will probably hear more about their work and Red Clouds going forward uh, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, there'll, be, there'll be more to hear about that. At the moment, it's been really organizing uh, presentations to uh, prospective uh, future investors. Great, another question from Katie here. Is your lithium extraction technology unique? That is an excellent question, thank you. Um, so the technology itself, Iron Exchange, has been known for 70 years and widely used in water treatment. And in the uranium industry, uh, Iron Exchange produces 50 to 70% of all the uranium we have. So it's widely used in the metals industry and widely used in water treatment. What's new is bringing it to lithium. Our technology partner, Lilac, what they have done is come up with a bead that selectively takes the lithium out of the water without taking the others, and that bead lasts a long time. So that's why we've partnered with them. So it is a new technology for the lithium space, but very well known in other industries. And uh, one of the key benefits is that you can scale it up quickly and it's modular. So this question, last couple of questions here from Craig. Uh, can you expand on the exclusivity on the Lilac, uh, the technology partner there? No, that, um, uh, thank you very much. So it's exclusive for the area around where we're operating in Argentina. And for a period of time, it's exclusive over the key brine areas in Argentina. Uh, so that is to ensure that we can both get our project up and running and get our expansion underway. However, Lilac has been working for some time with parties in the Western US, and we're very keen for them to continue. What we've found is that if you're just by yourself, exclusively with one technology, it's very lonely. However, if we can say that Lilac is working on these projects in the US, as well as with us in Argentina, that's a much better, um, it's a much better story for the equity markets and the debt markets. Okay, one last question from also from Craig here. When will the pilot pl uh, plan be on site? Yes, um, we'll be providing more information on that now that we've signed the uh, finalized transaction with Lilac. We had been forecasting it to be there by the end of this year. It might be very early next year. Uh, we are building all of the equipment so that we can actually put that in place. Uh, Lilac has ordered all of the equipment, but the supply chains for actually getting some of the electronics for that have been slightly delayed. So there may be a month, six weeks delay in that. Uh, so it's not, if it's not at the end of this year, it'll be very early next year. Thank you. And thank you all for your interest. Thank you, Steve, especially being up so early at your time there in Sydney, Australia, to be with us here today. It's an absolute pleasure. And uh, Gilbert, I, I do appreciate you uh, hosting these, uh, these conferences. have always, always been uh, really good to be part of. Thank you so much for now. Bye-bye. Thank you, Steve.